It's Swami time. It's Swami time. It's Swami time. Hey, Family Feud. What's up? Um, Commissioner Gordon Swami Picasso Gordon is here with you. Uh, fine fall afternoon in Maine, Eddington, Maine. Uh, coming to you, going to do a little video session here. We're going to look back uh, briefly, and we're going to get into the matchups um, almost to the quarter pole. Uh, it's been a good start, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, looking back, let's just recap last week's games. I'm not going to go into huge detail. just want to hit some high points. Um, start off with uh, Dreadheads, Triple T's. Good game. Real good game. Came down to the late portion of it. Savvy move by Dreads, picking up the Jacksonville D. Um, gets him 15 points, zero points from Tenacious Terriers defense. That swing had a big portion, and then it's only a one-point game without that. But regardless, Triple T's um, still scoring over 100, but never scoring high enough. If he'd have played half of the league, he would have won. But the matchup that he got, he didn't. He sits at one and two. Dreads gets to two and one. Important victory early in the season. Team is looking good. Um, we'll talk about some of the changes he made moving forward. So uh, sitting in a good position, though. Tied for first in his – or one, one game back in his division. Uh, Terriers, um, only one game out of the top spot in his division. So uh, still time to make up ground there. Uh, moving on. Crimson Rain, Boats and Hose. Uh, Boats did just enough. Scored 104. But Crimson, uh, crushing blow, losing Saquon Barkley was the story of this game. Um, moves to 0-3, uh, not really scoring. Team Team's in a little bit of turmoil right now. Uh, still early, can still get back in it. Boats, doesn't have a juggernaut, but um, seems to be drawing the right matchups. He scored the seventh highest total, I'm sorry, the seventh lowest point total in the league, but his schedule has been the second softest. Um, he has only had the second least points scored against him. So he's getting the right matchups every week. Um, and that kind of counts when it comes to playoff, getting in the playoffs. You've got to win some of those low scoring ones sometimes to get in. Um, so we'll see how that works out moving forward. Uh, next game, Rabbis versus the Young Guns. Rabbis, big explosion, especially with Drew, Drew Brees being gone. We were kind of wondering how his Saints players would do. And that matchup, they fared well. They came out fired up. Uh, he threw up a 136 spot on Young Guns. Young Guns with a dismal 81. His team is looking scattered right now. He's the lowest scoring team in the league. But he does sit one and two and has plenty of time to turn it around. Um, we'll see how that works out going forward. But that was the biggest thumping of the week. Um, a 55-point loss to the rabbi. Um, game of the week, it was... Not much of a game. Daddy took care of the Rook by um, 42 points. Nerd Puppets threw up a giant 131 on, and the Rookie fell back to earth with an 89. You're going to have those weeks in the Family Feud. You're going to have that in, fam in fantasy football. Uh, too bad for Jax. It happened against the first time matchup with his dad. So King of the Castle still goes out to Johnny. And in our game of the week... That was our game of the week. The highest scoring uh, game of the week was Crush and Dirte. Crush puts up a real nice total of 126.5. Our whole team really shows up, and it doesn't matter. She gets drilled by 29 to the steamroller that is Dirte, 155. Um, to move to 3-0, and he's just destroying the league. We're going to focus on that later in this. So... That's the recap looking back. Um, let's start looking forward into some of the matchups now. All right, let's get right into the first matchup of the week. We're going to go with Orange Crush at Boats and Hose. And uh, by the way, this whole segment is brought to you by Young's Double Chocolate Stout. We're in Patriots territory. You can see super dark, dark beer. Um, that's our sponsor here. Let's get into the game. Crush, Boats and Hose. Uh, contentious matchup, no doubt. This is 
son versus mother, constantly telling Crush to shut up. She's constantly looking for respect in the league. She does have two rings, doesn't get a ton of, of uh, respect as a two-time champ, and she is looking to rectify that this year. Now, I'm looking at this matchup. Crush comes in at one and two, boats at two and one. But honestly, the Crush has scored way more points than Boats and looks like has quite a bit more fearsome uh, lineup. Her big three, you, you can put her big three up against any in the league. Deshaun Watson, Ezekiel Elliott, and Julio Jones. Um, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. It just You're going to have to bring it every week because she's going to score. Uh, if Sony Michelle gets going, um, She's got a nice pickup with DJ Chark. Um, he seems to be the go-to guy in Jacksonville there. Um, she's not getting much tight end help with Witten. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna be touchdown dependent at this point in his career. Uh, but looking at the matchups this week, Deshaun Watson at Carolina, it's, that's a tough matchup, but Deshaun seems to be matchup proof. Zeke against New Orleans, he's matchup proof, and Julio seems to be matchup proof, even though it's a tough Tennessee defense. Uh, I expect her to have another high scoring week. Real savvy pickup of the Green Bay Packers defense. They look for real. Um, we'll find out tonight on the Thursday night game because uh, they do have a tough matchup against Philly. Philly can score and move the ball. She's going to score, though. Um, Boats hasn't scored a ton of points. Um, just really hasn't, but he's gotten enough. He's really been riding the early success of Baltimore. Lamar Jackson and Mark Ingram have been his main thing. If one doesn't do it, the other one does it in a week. So he kind of goes as Baltimore goes. Um, they're in a matchup with Cleveland. They're at home. The total on the game is only 45. You don't know how many points are going to be scored in that game. Um, the James Conner thing, he's, you know, he mentions him a lot on the group text, but Conner hasn't done anything. Um, he's failed to even score in double digits uh, this year. I'm sorry, he had 11.5, which is his high game of the year. Eight, 11.5, and seven. Just hasn't gotten going. Uh, now with Mason Rudolph at the helm, I just don't know uh, how much he's going to be a factor. Connor will have some good games here and there. He does have a juicy matchup, matchup against Cincinnati, and he's at home. So if there's a week for Connor to get going, this might be the week. Uh, Thielen draws a brutal matchup against Chicago, uh, and Chris Godwin has a tough matchup against the Rams. So I don't like the matchups for Boats this week. Um, I love Crush's team. I think she's going to be one of the better teams in the league. And so for the pick on this one, um, Swami is going Orange Crush by seven. All right, moving into our second game. Um, second game of the week is going to be Nerd Puppets at the Dreadheads. All right, looking at this game, Nerd's a uh, big, big victory last week. Really needed that. He was sitting at 0-2, uh, not to mention it was a family battle with the son we brought in the league. Gets him to 1-2. and two. Um, Did a little shifting, a little moving around like Nerd's likes to do. Um, trying to shuffle in KC running backs. Didn't guess well on that. Uh, does it again this week. Plugs in Darrell Williams. Um, he looks like the guy until Damian Williams gets back, so... Um, does have a tough matchup. I think Detroit game plans well, but everybody's trying to get a piece of the Kansas City offense right now because they're just flattening people. Dak Prescott has been a completely different quarterback this year. If you watch him play, his accuracy is um, as good as it's ever been in the career. He's making great decisions with the football. They're very, very well balanced. It's the most balanced Dallas team that I've ever seen uh, under this regime. And um, Dak has been putting up great numbers. I mean, he's scoring this week. I don't know how Dak's going to do because Amari Cooper's a little dinged up, and that's kind of the, the cog that's been making that offense go. Uh, they have to go to the Superdome, tough place to play. I think game flow is going to determine how well Dak does this week, but he's looked great. I think that he, his floor is very high. Um, Chubb's running the ball great. Really tough matchup against Baltimore. Um, I think Daryl Williams is going to Daryl Williams is going to be good for Kansas City. Uh, Josh Gordon, it's Patriots. It's hit or miss. You got to pick it on the right week. You almost just have to roll your Patriots out every week and hope that you hit pick them on the right week. Gordon's a big play guy. Uh, Dorsett's been getting all the touchdowns up to this point, really, other than the one big one that Gordon had. And Mike Evans really 
What a game last week. Wow. What do you end up getting? 42 points. 190 yards and three touchdowns last week. And that's a that's a week winner. When you've got a player like that that can score that many points in a week, I mean, that's going to win for you. Olsen's been a nice surprise. Um, the old man's still getting it done. Still one of the better tight ends in the league. So, um, Dreadheads, I, I still have – sitting at 2-1, and one, um, Dreads is still a super dangerous team. Um, as long as you have Patrick Mahomes uh, – He's a cheat code. I mean, we've he said it before on the group text. He really is. He's so head and shoulders above everybody else in the league. Um, it's a built-in advantage every week. You know that you're you're giving up 10 to 15 points to him at the quarterback position almost every single week. Gurley hasn't gotten going yet, but I expect him to. They, they mentioned this week wanting to get him to 25 carries again. I think they're being the Rams are being smart with with Gurley, uh, easing him into the season so he doesn't break down like he did last year. I expect him to get better and better as the year goes on. Uh, what week that it gets going, who knows. This might be a good week with Tampa coming into town. Fournette's the same thing. I think Fournette's going to get going. So his running backs uh, underperformed to this point, but he's still winning. So that bodes bad for the rest of us because if they get going, his team's going to be super tough because Mahomes, Keenan Allen. Uh, and then the big news this week was picking up Waller. He gave up a second-round draft pick. He now has a top-flight Tier 1 tight end. Um, I think that puts Dreads as one of our elite teams. So, looking at this week, um, after everything that I've just said, I think that the Nerd Puppets can have big weeks, but he's going to have to have the big Mike Evans, big Nick Chubb. He's going to have to have some kind of special performance to win. And I don't see it this week. I think Dreads keeps rolling, moves to 3-1. and one. Uh, Swami's pick is Dreadheads by 6. Game 3. Uh, game 3, let's talk about it. Taylors, Tenacious, Terriers, the Triple T's at Young Guns. All right, this matchup, um, two one and two teams. It's a very important game for both squads. Um, and some shakeups on both squads going in. Young Guns uh, pulled, booted the quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Um, perennial top quarterback, just hasn't been getting it done. So Young Guns needed to make a move sitting at one and two, and he goes with the hot Daniel Jones. He has one game under his belt, come back – Come from behind victory in his first game uh, and looked good. Looked really good. Used his legs, used his arms, scored 40 points in his debut. Um, and he gets a pretty nice matchup against a Washington team that hasn't looked great at all. But let's let's not kid. The strength of Gunn's squad is still his running backs. Derek Henry, Henry Austin Eckler, Carryon Johnson. Uh, I think Eckler and Henry are both in the top 10, maybe even top 8. Um, carry on Johnson gets a really nice matchup against Kansas City game script and game flow may determine how he does in that but Kansas City can be run on and teams probably should try to run on them to keep them off the field and I think they do so they're going to try to try to pound Johnson he's going to get the touches in that game if they don't fall too far behind and Young Guns is really a sleeping giant with Hopkins and Adams not really exploding like true number ones that they are it's going to happen um no better week than a week against the Triple T's to get going. So scary facing those two receivers that haven't done a lot, especially in a primetime matchup like we have tonight. Devontae Adams gets a Thursday night game, and uh, I expect him to have a good one tonight. Same thing with O.J. Howard. He's got to get involved eventually. Just so far, the team's been underperforming, but it's a, it's a sleeping giant. Um, is this the week? I don't know. Uh, the Triple T's, same thing. Pulled the trigger on the rookie quarterback. Although Kyler Murray, I, I think that he's going to be okay. That offense and that offensive line is just so bad. Um, most mobile quarterback in the league gets sacked eight times in a game. That's unbelievable. So uh, we'll go back to Russell Wilson. He's been on this squad before. Monstrous performance last week, like 46 points or something, probably the highest QB total of the year. And he's doing it with legs and arm as well. Uh We'll see if Triple T's is going to be the quarterback killer. Um, he's got a great matchup against Arizona. Um, the Triple T's did show some signs of life last week. Start, finally got a little bit of running back production from Freeman and Mixon and Mack. Um, so those three are going to get the start again. And then really the biggest thing for the Triple T's, he has a wealth of wide receiver talent. Uh, 
five receivers all scored double digits. Interesting stat. All five Triple T's receivers scored a touchdown last week and all scored double digits. So picking the right one, you know, if they're all going to produce, then he's got a good option there. This week, maybe two rookies coming out, McLaurin and Hardman. Uh, We'll see. Kelsey getting it done. Solid. So same old Triple T's team. Mediocre, going to score 100, going to have a good week, just not a huge week. Um, This week, uh, I think it's enough. I think Triple T's is going to get it done. He goes uh, two young guns and gets a victory in a very close one. Um, Triple T's by one and a half. Okay, for our fourth game of the week, it's a rematch of um, week one performance, Crimson at Rabbis. Uh, Crimson comes in 0-3, Rabbis 2-1. Um, Rabbis had a huge performance last week. Um, got a ton of points from Cooper, Kamara. Evan Ingram has been absolutely shining and crushing at the number one tight end in the league. And Matt Ryan, um, pretty good pickup for the Rabbi. Uh, Ryan, super steady, 26, 29, and 28. Those are good totals for him. Mark Cooper's been great. He's caught touchdowns in every game. He caught two last week. Uh, so this team's solid. There's still a glaring hole in the rabbi's lineup, and that's the number two running back. Um, Tariq Cohen, as a, you know, I said early in the year, I thought he was maybe a flex play at best. He's definitely not an RB2. I'm sure, there might be weeks when he catches a ton of passes, but up to now he's at eight points in week one. He had three points week two. He had three points in week three, that's not gonna get it done. Rabbi sitting at two and one, and he hasn't produced, so he's gotten away with it, but I don't know if you can go long run with that. Maybe if he gets Devin Singletary back for Buffalo, maybe he fills that hole, but uh, that's definitely a glaring hole in Rabbi's lineup. Stout, huge injury, maybe the top player in fantasy football. Uh, Saquon Barkley, he loses him. Uh, He's gonna have to shift over to a two running back, three receiver uh, set. Um, and he trots out Chris Carson and Josh Jacobs. A lot of people are calling for Jacobs as a, maybe a start of the week, so I expect a good game from him. Brady against Buffalo. It's a tough matchup. Buffalo's defense has been balling, uh, but Brady, you know, kind of owns Buffalo. We'll we'll see how that goes. Brady up to this point uh, been really good. 30, 27, and twenty four. That's those are solid numbers from QB. Nothing huge yet, but um, it's good consistent production. Juju finally got going last week with a really long touchdown. And um, DK Metcalf, been solid. Been right there at the 10, 13, and 7 his last three weeks. So uh, Crimson's reeling right now. Rabbi's kind of on a roll. Um, He's going to have a super hard time filling the gap with with Saquon gone. And I just kind of see the Rabbi... Uh, making it 2-0 against his buddy in the Little Elk City Bowl Part 2. If Crimson can get to pull the shocker upset, I think he's going to need a monster Josh Jacobs and a a huge Juju performance to get the victory. But um, I just see too much on the Rabbi's side right now. So Rabbi's looking good at 2-1. And and I think he gets the victory here. So in the rematch, we're going to go Rabbi's minus 7.5. Game of the week. All right, game of the week. It's our fifth matchup. Sam Houston's Hellraisers at Durte. Um, Hellraisers sitting at two and one. Um, actually, second highest scoring team in the league through three weeks, thanks to some big early season. Uh, kind of threw a nasty one up last week, but still sitting in a good position. Um, Carson Wentz, he gets him going on a Thursday night, so he gets some primetime action there. Wentz is going to be hurt a little bit just by the fact that he doesn't have, I think, Alshon Jeffrey's back, but missing Deshaun Watson to stretch the field um, definitely makes that offense different when he doesn't have all of his weapons. Um, He's still scoring in the 20s. He's still getting it done. Wentz is a good quarterback. David Johnson has underperformed to this point, and Aaron Jones is having to split some carries with Jamal Williams uh, in Green Bay, but he is scoring, and he's the better back of the two, so I think if they use him, he's going to be fine. Beckham's starting to get going. Draws a tough matchup against Baltimore. That thing's going to kind of be a fist fight, I think. Um, 
Galladay and Kirk are his other two receivers. Andrews has started off good, but a little bit of injuries hampered him. So we got some issues on the side of Hellraisers. Uh, but he is 2-1. and one. He's in his second game of the week uh, in his short career. And the reason why is because he's playing the juggernaut, Durte. And when I say juggernaut, I mean history-making juggernaut in our league. And I'm, I'm going to break this down a little bit. I spent some time looking at Durte. Durte's in his fifth year in the league. Um, first two seasons, he was a perennial doormat. He was 4-9 and nine, uh, for his first two years. And then magically... You know, he became the court, the running back guru. Uh, and he's done it again this year. But first, I want to talk about this historic epic streak that Durte is putting together. We don't, we haven't talked about it enough. And sorry, Durte, I know you don't talk about a streak when it's happening, but I just, I have to mention what's going on here. Durte has won 13 straight games in our league, including the championship in the playoffs last year. His last week came in week five of last year. And if that wasn't phenomenal enough, 13 straight in a salary cap league with competitive players, he's averaged an astonishing 138 points over that streak. Average. I'm going to venture to say we have some teams that haven't scored 138 over that same stretch. His low game over the stretch is 100.5, okay? He had a 100.5 and a 101.5. Since then, that was last year, week six. Since then, his low game is 121. His high game is 184. So over the last 10 weeks, he hasn't scored less than 121 points, okay? And he's averaged over 140 during that stretch. Phenomenal. After starting 8 and 18 over his first two years, he is now at 31 and 24, thanks to this magnificent streak. Durte, well done. And how's he done it? He's done it with running back play that has been unmatched. And here he sits again with the number one and the number two running backs in fantasy football. Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey sit as the one and two. Now, you couple that with the number three overall receiver in Sammy Watkins and the best offense in the league, okay? You throw in the number one defense, New England Patriots, and it just seems – and then you throw in Goff, who gets just 25 every week in his sleep. He has now made a super savvy pickup on the waiver wire of Tyler Lockett, who is crushing it uh, the last two weeks and just mowing through targets. And, guys, we're all playing for second place. Add in Cooper Cup who is the number one receiver in another high-powered offense. And, guys, we are all playing for second place right now unless something happens. Now, here's the Achilles heel. After Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey, he has nothing. There is not even a, another running back on the roster. Um, if either one of those guys were to go down, he's going to be scrambling like the rest of us. But up to now, he's knock on wood, Derte has been charmed. He's avoided the injury bug. He gets a huge performance from one or two players every week, and he just steamrolls and scores so many points that nobody can beat him. Here in the game of the week this week, I'm not even going to think about picking against him. He gets it done again. He's got the best players in the league. His running backs are going to get 50-plus every single week starting there, and then he's going to get – he's got solid Watkins, Lockett, and Cup. Um, he's the best team in the league, and he's making the rest of us look silly. Bravo, congratulations. Cheers to you, Durte. It's a hell of a run. 13 in a row is historic. Um, I don't want to wish against you, Jax, but to continued success, Durte, and um, stay healthy because this is a hell of a team and way to turn it around. You're what we are trying to get to. So in this one, um, Durte minus 11 and a half. Game of the week. Well, there it is, guys. There's the Swami and the ball prediction for the week. Um, hope you have a good week. I like the activity that I'm seeing in the league. Um, got some good teams, and I think our best football is still ahead of us. So, uh, hopefully, usually Thursday nights is fun because everybody gets active on the uh, on the line and gets to talking on the group text. So, uh, enjoyed it. Picasso Gordon um, from Maine. Saying hi to everybody, and I miss you guys, and uh, Swami is out!